So this morning, we are going to start in child's pose. So you can go ahead and get yourself situated there with the knees a little bit wider apart than hip width. Sit back toward your heels and allow your upper body to extend forward. And you can support your forehead with a block or with your hands if the head doesn't meet the floor. And take a few moments just to allow the body to settle here. Make any adjustments if you need to to be more comfortable in the hips. And then gently close the eyes, starting to turn your focus and attention inward. Starting with a simple body scan. Just going through your own body from head to toe, noticing how you're feeling this morning. Acknowledging your energy level, what your mood is like, and where your thoughts are. And noticing if there are any areas of holding or tension right now in child's pose. And if so, just letting your attention rest on that spot in the body and try and let it release over the course of a few breaths. Start to bring your attention to your own breath. Noticing where you expand as you inhale and where you contract as you exhale. And start to consciously slow down and deepen your breath taking more time to expand the next time you inhale and more time to empty the lungs with a slow, steady stream of air. And if possible, breathe in and out the nose only so that you can hear the sound of your own breath and be able to respond to any changes in the quality of your breath as you're practicing. And take five more deep breaths here in child's pose. And after those five breaths, you can float your eyes open. We're going to inhale and lift up off of the heels, coming into table. You can adjust your knees about hip width apart and plant the palms shoulder width apart. We're going to warm up the spine on an inhalation, lift the tailbone, chest and chin, looking forward or up. Exhale, drop the tailbone, round the spine and tuck the chin to the chest. Again, inhaling and exhaling. So just moving through these spinal waves at the speed of your own breath, trying to find the whole range of motion in the spine. The next time that you exhale, we're gonna hold there in a rounded back. Let the chin move toward the chest and still breathe as deeply as you're able to, even though we're compressing the front of the body. Feel yourself expanding the side and back of the ribcage. And 
One more deep breath in. Exhale, come back to a neutral table pose. We're going to extend the arms forward from here. You can keep your hips in line over the knees. And then let your armpits, chest, and head move down toward the floor for half down dog. Deeply extending the spine. You want to get rid of any rounding in the upper back. So feel the spine pull deeper into your upper body each time you exhale. And actively press through the palms the way you would in the full posture. Feel your arms extend, biceps and triceps become active. Three more breaths. And the next time you inhale, lift your head and take it back to table pose. From here, we're going to take a lunge. You can place the right foot in between the hands or grab your blocks if you like. You want that knee in line over the ankle. And slide your left knee a little farther back here so you can get low through the front of the hips. Let your upper body rest on the right thigh for now and feel your breath expand into that leg. And the next time that you inhale, we're going to come up to crescent lunge, drawing the spine back and line over the hips as you raise the arms. Press strongly against the front foot to stabilize that leg and start to lift up out of the lower back, feeling that length move up the spine and through the arms. You can glance up if you like or choose a different focal point. Three more breaths here. The next time you exhale, take your left hand to the floor block. Right arm's going to stay up for a spinal twist. Push strongly down against that palm and rotate from the navel all the way up the spine. One more deep breath in. Exhale, release the right hand to the floor. Let's lift the back knee up off of the ground so that you're in a high lunge position. Feeling your quads contract to help extend the knee and reach out all the way through that heel. From here, we're going to come to high crescent lunge. Inhale, reach the arms forward and up, drawing the spine back over the hips. Steady and slow with the breath. One more inhalation. Exhale, release. Place the palms directly on the floor and step to plank pose. Bring the feet and legs together and line the shoulders over the palms. Five deep breaths here. One more inhalation. As you exhale, bend the elbows back and slowly lower to the floor. Point the toes and squeeze the shoulders together. Inhale to cobra. Exhale, let it go. Twice more. Inhale, rolling up, opening across the chest. Exhale, release. Once more. Inhale. Exhale, let it go. From here, press back up to the knees. And we'll take that for the other side, stepping the left foot in between the hands for a low lunge, lying that knee directly over the ankle. And walk your right knee a little farther back. A few breaths here just to release down into the hips, upper body resting on the left thigh. And the next time you inhale, lifting up to crescent lunge, extend the spine and arms, stabilize that front leg and start to lift up out of the lumbar, nice and long, maybe glancing up to challenge your balance. One more breath in here. As you exhale, take the right hand down and start to rotate through your spinal twist. Left arm stays up here. We're going to push down really strongly against the right palm. 
and rotate from the navel all the way up the spine. One more breath in. As you exhale, release. Lift the back knee up off of the ground, getting strong through the front of that thigh. And then when you're ready here, we're gonna inhale, come up to balance again, high crescent lunge. Keep lifting that back knee as you stay low in the front knee. Three more breaths. Last inhalation, exhale, release. From here, palms directly on the floor, we're gonna to step to plank pose. Feet and legs together, shoulders over the palms, five steady breaths. Good, everybody, two more. With your last exhalation, slowly lower through Chaturanga to the mat. Point the toes, shoulders back. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, press up to the knees. Exhale, send the hips back. Then lift the knees and hips for our first down dog. And adjust the feet a few inches apart. Spread the fingers widely. And let your head and neck release down. Feel free to stretch out the back of the legs a little bit. If you want to pedal, bending one knee at a time as you reach the opposite heel toward the floor, just to lengthen the Achilles and wake up the calves a little bit. And then eventually settle into stillness in the pose. If the hamstrings are feeling a little tight, just keep the knees relatively bent until they start to loosen up as we come through sun salutations. The next time you inhale, look toward the front of your mat. As you exhale, step all the way up to the hands. Place the hands against the shins. Inhale to the flat back position. Exhale, fold over the legs. Twice more, inhaling to extend the spine. Exhale to flex the spine. Last one, inhale. Exhale, release. You're going to hang here over the legs, five breaths. Allow your shoulders, head and neck to relax down. The next time you inhale, we're going to come up to stand, move through flat back, reach all the way up overhead, and exhale, release. So come toward the very front of your mat if you're not quite there, and we'll move through a few rounds of sun salutations. On an inhalation, reach up and overhead, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, exhale, plank pose. Take a deep breath in, exhale, slowly lower down. Inhale, cobra, exhale, release. Inhale, press to plank or your knees. Exhale, lift back and up, downward facing dog. Adjust your stance if you need to, and then settle into the pose, finding one focal point here. Five more breaths. One more inhalation, look forward. Exhale, feet to the hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, release. Second time through, inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank pose. Deep breath in, exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra, exhale, release. Inhale, plank or table, 
Exhale, downward facing dog. Try and keep that breath slow and steady. Let there be a lot of space between the fingers as you actively press against the heels of the palms and down through every single knuckle. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, feet to the hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, release. Last time through, inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank pose. Deep breath in, exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, press up. Exhale, lift back. Adjust for downward facing dog. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, feet to the hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, release. Then we're going to take one round of Sun Series B. Stand with your feet together for chair pose. On an inhalation, bend the knees, sitting back as you extend the arms. Exhale like you're diving, come to your fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank pose. Take a deep breath in, strong through the core. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, push up. Exhale, lift back. From here, inhale, raise your right leg up. Exhale, step to a high lunge. Adjust your left foot to the left a little bit, then put the heel down. Inhale, warrior one. I'm going to stay here a few breaths. If you need to adjust your stance, you've got time to do that. You want to rotate the hips and upper body forward and really lift that back knee. One more breath in. Exhale, release. You can either step to down dog or take a second vinyasa, coming to plank and then slowly lowering. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, press up. Exhale, lift back. From down dog, we're going to inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, step to your high lunge. Move your right foot over to the right slightly, heel down. Inhale, warrior one. Keep lifting that back knee, rotating the hips forward. Three more breaths. With your last exhalation, release. Again, you can either go right to down dog, We'll come through one more vinyasa, exhaling from plank, inhale, cobra, exhale, release. Inhale, push up, exhale, lift back. Five breaths here in downward facing dog. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Scoop the feet together, bend the knees deeply as we inhale, chair pose. Exhale, stand and release. Gently close your eyes to your mountain pose. And just notice how you feel in your body right now. Try and consciously slow down the speed of your breath. And 
And once the breath and heart rate feel calm again, you can float the eyes open. From here, we're going to come into triangle pose. So if you'd like to use blocks for that, you can take them on the right side or the front of the mat. And we'll step the right foot forward first, slightly ahead of those blocks, big step back with the left. And then keep going so that you've got a wide enough space here, about as wide as a warrior two. We're going to have both legs straight. Open the arms out to the side and engage strongly through the quads to help extend the knees. And then you're going to let your hips rock back as you lean your upper body as far forward as you can. And then just pivot the arms, finding the block or your shin with your right hand, standing up with the left arm. Notice how you're feeling in your lower back. If there's a lot of arch happening, just rein that in a little by tucking your tailbone forward so that you're not putting pressure here in the lumbar discs. And keep the legs as strong and active as you can. Good, a few more breaths. The next time you inhale, engage your core, lift yourself back up, and then exhale, bend your right knee for warrior two. If you need to adjust, go ahead. You want to be able to get pretty low in that front leg, about a 90 degree bend. Actively reach the arms apart, and if you can, turn your head to look over one of your front fingers. Good. Keep your back leg nice and strong. We're going to lower the left hand to the left leg. Inhale, raise the right arm. Exhale, gently lean back. Reverse warrior two. Reaching the right arm over your face. The next time you inhale, slowly return to warrior two. Look down at the ground, we're going to exhale and bring the hands to the floor on either side of the foot. Lift your back heel off the mat and lower that knee to the floor. Good. From here, take both arms inside of the right foot, which you can move over maybe an inch or two and turn out at a slight angle. And then let that knee fall away from your shoulder, opening the outer hip. If you have the blocks for triangle, you're welcome to place them down. If you'd like to bring your forearms down and they don't quite reach the floor, you can have your blocks there. And take a few breaths to really release down into the front of the pelvis. If you notice that your hips are pulling up and back out of the pose, probably don't need to be coming down to the elbows. So it's better to then stay higher in the upper body so that you can keep the hips nice and low. Take five more deep breaths here. And after those five breaths, come up off of the blocks or the floor if you were down. You can move those blocks off to the left side. We'll use them in a moment for triangle. And I have you move your right foot even wider out to the side so that you can plant your palms shoulder width apart. From here, lift your back knee up and then stay strong in your core. We're going to step to plank pose. With the feet and legs together, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, press up to the knees. Exhale, hips back and lift for downward facing dog. Take a few deep breaths here. If you like, you can alternate pedaling the knees back and forth again just to help release that right hip. Or if you like, you can take a few breaths in child's pose. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, step to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. 
But stay here in the fold, letting your arms and shoulders hang down. If you like, you can hold onto your elbows or you can wrap your forearms behind your calves. Allow your whole spine to decompress and lengthen down. Let go of your elbows or your calves if the arms were there. Bend the knees slightly and slowly roll up through ragdoll all the way to stand. And then once you're upright, we're going to set up triangle pose for the left side. So place those blocks on the left side of your mat. I'm just going to turn to face the open view. Left foot forward, right foot steps back, and then increase the spacing until you're about as wide as warrior two with the front heel kind of in line with the back arch. Legs are strong and active here. We're going to open the arms out to the side again. Let the hips rock back slightly and then extend the upper body as far forward as you can, creating length through both sides of the ribcage before you pivot the arms. Left hand on the blocks or your shin, right arm extending upward. A nice steady deep breath. Keep feeling that length through your spine. And if the low back feels tight, just tuck the tailbone in a little bit so that you're not overarching there. And the next time you inhale strong through the core as you lift back upright. Exhale, bend deeply into your left knee for warrior two. And if you need to adjust your feet here, go ahead. I want to get nice and low in that front leg and the back leg remains strong and straight. You can turn your head to look over one of your front fingers here as you settle into that steady, smooth breath. We're going to take the right hand down to the right leg. Inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale, lean back for reverse warrior two. Reaching the left arm over your face, away from that hip joint. The next time you inhale, slowly return to warrior two. Exhale, bring the hands to the floor. Lift your back heel up and gently place that knee down on the mat. Good. From here, we're going to take both arms inside of the left leg, which you're going to move over maybe an inch or two and turn that foot out at a slight angle. And allow the knee and thigh to fall away from your shoulder, opening up the outer hip here. And feel a nice downward release through the pelvis. And again, if you want to bring the Elbows down, but you can't quite reach the floor. You can just grab those, black, those blocks and set them up underneath your elbows. And if you went down to the elbows, let's come back up to the hands. You can move the blocks out of the way if you're using them. Move your left foot over even more to the left so you can plant your palms shoulder width apart. We're going to lift the back knee up off of the ground and then strong through your core as you step back to plank. Good. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Slowly lower down. Inhale. Cobra pose. Exhale. Release. We're going to press just up to the knees here as you inhale. Adjust the knees a little wider apart than hip width and exhale, sit back, child's pose. Allow your shoulders and arms to relax. Feel your hips settle down toward the heels. You can take at least five breaths here.
And from here, when you're ready to come out, lift your head and hips. And we're going to come to downward facing dog, plant the palms, and lift back and up. And from this down dog, walk your hands back to your feet, taking several steps to end up in a forward fold at the back of the mat. And again, you can hold on to your elbows if you like, or wrap the forearms around the calves, lengthening through the spine. Five breaths here. And let go of your elbows or calves. We're going to take the hands on the front of the shins. Inhale, come to the flat back position, getting as long through your spine as you can. Hold that position and bring the hands to the waist. The next time you exhale, press your hips forward in space to stand all the way up. Good. All right. From here, we're going to take a few balancing postures. If you'd like to be closer to a wall to help with your balance, you can move off of your mat. We're going to start with standing balancing pigeon pose. So the feet are going to be hip width apart, slight bend to the knees. We're going to be standing on the left foot first. So you're going to cross your right ankle to the left thigh. You can help bring the ankle up so it's not directly at the knee. And then open that knee away from your upper body. And then your hip joints are going to go back in space as your upper body leans forward, really long through your lower back. And then bring the palms together in front of the heart. And so just take a few moments to find stability. And if this is really intense in your right hip here, you don't have to go any lower in the pose. Right? The more you bend your left knee, the more intensely you're going to feel that stretch through the piriformis and glute. If you fall out of balance, don't worry about it. Just set yourself up again from the beginning of the pose. There's no rush to get back into it. Good. If you're still with me, we're going to inhale, slowly stand, and uncross that leg. Good. Shake out the hips a little bit. Release that intensity from the left side. And then we'll take that for the right leg. Feet are hip width apart. Slight bend to the knees here. We're going to bring the left ankle to the center of the right thigh and open that knee away from you. And if you need to help adjust the foot, just lean down and bring the ankle where it needs to be. Hip joints are going back in space. Upper body leaning forward, really long and strong through the lumbar here. Palms gently press together in front of you. Good. If you want more intensity in the hip, bend your right knee more. As the upper body comes closer to the crossed leg, you should feel that deeper stretch in the left side. Slowly stand, just uncross that leg, and again, shake it out a little bit. Good, we're going to stand on the left foot again, coming into tree pose. Lift your right knee up toward your chest, open that hip out to the side, and put the foot either below your knee or reach down to help bring the foot above the knee. No matter where the foot is making contact, I want you to contract those muscles against the foot as you press the foot into that contraction. You want to try and keep the knee out to the side as wide as you can. And then you can again take the palms together in front of you, or you can extend the arms up if you like. Slow, deep breath, and keep your focus on one single point in front of you.
Good. If the arms are up, exhale and release them. If the foot is high, you can lean down and help release the foot. And again, shake out the knee a little bit on the leg that you're standing on. Let's do the other side, standing on your right leg. And lift the left knee up toward your chest. We're going to open the hip nice and wide and put the foot either below or reach down to help bring the foot above the knee. Good. Feel the leg that you're standing on contract against the pressure of your foot. Take a hand position and a steady focus, smooth, even breath. If the foot is high, you can lean down and help release. Good, nice work. From here, I'm going to have you find your strap. And we're going to take a wide-legged forward fold using the strap as an assist for the shoulder opening. If you're comfortable connecting your hands behind your back, you can do this without the strap. So we're going to take the feet about as wide apart as a warrior two pose. Both legs are straight here. And turn your heels out slightly and the big toes in slightly and then engage the legs. I'm going to take the hands behind the back, and if you're using the strap, hold it in between your fists, glide your shoulder blades back, and extend the arms behind you, reaching the fists toward the floor. If you have any discomfort in the front of the shoulder or difficulty extending your arms, just take a bit more space between the hands. Good. From here, a nice deep breath in. Extend the spine. Exhale, hips back, upper body forward as we start the fold. Eventually letting your head drop down and the arms gradually lift up away from the hips. A few more breaths here. Check in with how you feel in the back of your neck. Make sure there's no holding there, you want the head to release down. And if you have a lot of mobility in your shoulders, notice if they're starting to sink down by your neck. You actually want to keep space between the top of the shoulders and the ears. So the shoulder blades themselves may feel like they're gliding up toward your hips, but the arms are gliding back toward your head. The next time you exhale, lower the arms, but stay in your fold. You can put the strap down if you're using it, and we'll take the hands to the floor in between the feet or on blocks if the hands don't reach. From here, inhale and slowly extend the spine, walking your hands underneath the shoulders, finding a flat back position, feeling your tailbone draw back and the crown of the head reach forward. We're going to take a spinal twist, left palm underneath your face, right hand to the waist as you rotate from the navel up the spine and reaching the right arm up. If that doesn't work for your shoulder, however, you can keep the hand at the waist. One more deep breath in. Exhale and release the right hand. Find a flat back position again and switch sides. Right palm underneath the face, left hand to the waist as you rotate from the navel all the way up the spine and eventually extend the left arm up. One more deep breath in, exhale, and release. Good, look over at your right foot. You're gonna to start to point that foot toward the front of the mat and walk your hands over there and bring up in a lunge, just briefly so that you can from here step up and back to down dog. Once you're in down dog and you've adjusted the spacing between the hands and feet, press as strongly as you can against your palms and let your head and neck release. Five breaths here. Good. 
From here, bring your feet and legs together. Look forward and inhale, come to plank pose, shoulders in line over the palms. Exhale, slowly lower to the floor. We're gonna stay down here on the mat. Bring the legs together, point the toes, and reach your arms alongside the body. We're gonna come into a locust, roll the shoulders together, and then lift everything up off of the mat. Breathe deeply against the floor. One more breath in. Exhale, release, and turn your head down to one side, and let the shoulders sink down. Let every muscle in your back and legs relax. A couple breaths here to recover. And coming into that a second time when you're ready. Forehead down, squeeze the legs together, roll the shoulder blades in toward the spine, and then lift everything up. Arms, legs, chest and head, locust pose. See if you can get just a tiny bit higher than last time. One more breath in. Exhale, let it go. You can turn your head to the other side if you like. And again, allow your shoulders just to melt down toward the mat, letting go of any active energy on the back side of the body. And last time when you're ready, forehead down, legs together, engage the shoulder blades and lift yourself up. You can stay here in this variation of the pose or try extending the arms out to the side for airplane wings or rotate the, the thumbs up and extend the arms out in front of you. One more breath in, exhale, let it go. Make a little pillow here for your forehead by stacking your palms and let your head rest down there. Separate the legs a bit wider apart than hip width and bend your knees. We're gonna drop the heels back and forth like windshield wipers to loosen up the lumbar. from here and I'm going to have you roll to your back so you can just carefully turn yourself right over. We're going to work on bridge pose. So adjust yourself to the center of the mat. Once you get here to your back, bend your knees and plant the feet about hip width apart. And we're going to adjust the shoulder blades much like we did for locust pose. Just kind of shimmy them underneath you one at a time to get them to come closer to your spine. And then when you're ready, press against your feet, palms, and forearms. Lift the hips up for bridge pose. Engaging the glutes and hamstrings. And if you can adjust the shoulders again, once you're lifted, you might find a bit more opening across the collarbones. Take one more deep breath in and exhale, slowly roll down. Separate the shoulders and take a few breaths here to let the back relax. You just notice the increase in energy in the body, heart rate going up, breathing rate going up. And so if you need a little more time to relax between repetitions, feel free to just continue at your own pace. We're gonna take two more bridge poses. So if you're ready for the second one, make that shoulder adjustment again. And then press against your feet, palms, and forearms, lifting up into bridge. You wanna try and get that 
arch mostly in the upper back. So really push against the feet and feel that arch shift as the rib cage lifts, chest moving toward your shoulders, or excuse me, toward your chin. And if the shoulders are coming close together enough to clasp your hands underneath you, you can take that variation and press the fist firmly against the floor. One more deep breath in and exhale, slowly lower, separating the hands if you connected them and then separating the shoulders once the hips are on the mat again. A couple of breaths here to relax. And when you're ready for our final bridge pose, go ahead and make that shoulder adjustment, opening the chest, and lift up when you're ready. Take five more breaths in the pose. And after those five breaths, slowly start releasing. Disconnect the hands if you clasp them. Good. And once the hips are down, separate the shoulders. Just take a few breaths here to allow every muscle in your back to soften. You can gently close the eyes if you like. And then we're going to separate the feet about as wide as the yoga mat. And Gently drop the knees back and forth. Another little release for the lumbar. The next time your knees drop to the right side of the mat, let them stay down there. And raise your left arm up and over your head away from that hip joint. You can exaggerate the breath a little bit. Really deep inhalations to help expand through the left side of the ribcage. And long, slow exhalations as you gently press the inside of your left knee down toward the floor. One more breath in here. And exhale, release the arm and pick the knees up. And we'll take the knees to the left side of the mat and raise the right arm up and over your head, actively reaching away from the right hip joint and pressing the inside of the right knee a little lower to the floor. One more deep breath in. And exhale, release. You can gently pick the knees up and scoop the feet all the way together so they touch one another and let the knees fall open out to the side for reclined bound angle pose. You can let your arms relax either out by your sides in the T position or a little bit above the head if that's comfortable for you. And just allow every muscle in the inner and outer thighs, the glutes and the hips, to relax in this pose. If you're unable to release and the hip flexors are contracting, you can grab your blocks and place a block outside of each thigh or knee. And hopefully by now the Heart rate and breathing rate should have completely come down from the back bending practice. 
take five more slow breaths here. After those five breaths, you can bring your arms down, take them outside of the thighs to help gently close the knees. And we're going to bring the knees into the chest, hugging the arms around the legs, and just rock a little bit side to side to massage your lower back. And then turn the knees around in a big circle several times in each direction to massage your SI joints. And then let the knees arrive back at the center. We're going to separate them wider apart than the ribcage. Reach the arms inside of the thighs for the ankles or the feet and take happy baby pose. If the feet don't lift up away from the thighs, you can just keep them down and hold the ankles or shins and just work on the hip opening here. If you're comfortable lifting the feet, you can do two versions of the pose. One is by trying to keep the sacrum down on the floor and that's going to activate more of a hip opening in the pose. Or you can pull the feet toward you and lift the sacrum and hips up off the floor, which is going to give you more of a traction and release for the lower back. One more deep breath in and exhale, start to release. You can let go of the feet and place them on the mat. And I'll have you just roll yourself over to one side and gently press up from here. We're gonna take a few seated poses to finish up this morning. If you've got a blanket or two blocks that you wanna sit on to elevate the hips, you can go ahead and do that. And we're going to start with a seated forward fold. I like using my strap for this one, but if you don't have one or you're happier without it, you can do that as well. We're going to take the strap around both feet here and hold with a really tight grip so that you can help extend the spine into staff pose, our preparation for this fold. So feel your lumbar draw in and that length move all the way up the spine. And for the fold, gently lower the chin toward the chest and pull against the strap to help guide the spine down over the legs. And then you can re-extend the arms. If you've got a lot of strap left, keep using it. If you're at your feet, you can take those instead. And if at any point you have uncomfortable pressure in your lower back, just modify the pose by bending your knees. When you're ready to come out, let's inhale and slowly lift up. Good. If you're using a strap, you can put that one aside. Just bring the soles of the feet together and take seated down angle pose, opening the knees out to the side, holding the tops of the feet or the ankles, whatever you comfortably reach. And just like that last fold, we're going to start by actually lifting and extending the spine. So draw the lumbar in, feel that energy move all the way up through the crown of the head. Start to actively squeeze the outer hips to see if that can open the knees a bit more. And if this is enough intensity, you can stay upright in this pose. If you're going into the fold, we're going to gently lower the chin, pull against the feet to start guiding the spine forward. 
Just little by little here. Doesn't matter how far down you can get. And if you're ready to come out, let's inhale again, lift upright, and exhale, close the knees. Straighten the left leg out in front of you and keep the right knee bent, bring that heel close to your hip. And we'll sit up nice and tall, preparing for a twist. We're gonna raise the right arm, your left hand can stay at the knee, and then pull it toward you as you rotate and place the right hand down behind you. Each time that you inhale here, think of sitting up a little taller, and each time you exhale, perhaps a bit more rotation. You can also bring this knee into the bend of your elbow if you like, or cross the elbow outside of the knee. Take one more deep breath in. As you exhale, gently release the twist and extend the right leg in front of you. Other side, bend the left knee and place the foot close to the hip. Sit up nice and tall here. We're gonna raise the left arm and inhale. Pull that knee toward you as you rotate and exhale, left hand to the floor. Take one more deep breath in and exhale, unwind. Good, you can release that leg and slide down off of whatever you're sitting on. We're gonna return to the back and finish up with one more reclined twist, a deeper twist for the lower back. So once you are down on the floor, I'm gonna have you bend your knees and cross your left thigh tightly over your right thigh. We're gonna do an eagle leg variation for this twist. You can open your arms out to the side, and before we drop the knees, I'm gonna have you adjust your hips to the left side of your mat a little bit, and then drop your knees over to the right side of the mat. So that little adjustment is gonna help your SI joints stay in line over one another and give you a little more rotation through the lumbar. Take at least five more breaths here. And see if you can try and keep your left shoulder blade down as close to the floor as possible. And from here, just uncross the legs and then lift the knees coming back up. Adjust your hips so they feel centered below your shoulders. And just pause a moment to allow your spine and ribcage to release from the twist. And then we'll take the other side, crossing the right thigh tightly over the left. And then scoot your hips over to the right side of the mat a few inches. 
before letting the knees fall over to the left. Nice deep, slow breath. And see if you can keep the right shoulder blade low or on the floor. And when you're ready to release, just uncross the legs here, and then lift the knees back up. Adjust your hips so they're centered below your shoulders. Take the feet slightly wider apart than hip width, and just let the knees rest in against one another for a moment, and allow your spine and ribcage to relax from being in a twist. And then consider how you'd like to be during Shavasana, corpse pose. If there are any extra layers of clothing that you want to put on to stay warm, or any support that you want to put under your body, either under your head or behind your knees, go ahead and gather whatever you need to be completely comfortable. And I'll talk you through a few minutes of guided body relaxation. Once you are comfortable and settled, gently close your eyes. And as your body is releasing into the floor, just take a few moments to do a body scan like we did at the start of class today. And just going through the body from head to toe, noticing if there are any areas that are still holding on to active energy. And if so, just focus on that point for a moment and see if you can consciously let it release over the course of a few breaths. And then take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale out through the mouth. And let that be a gesture your body that you're going to let go of the deep breathing practice now and allow your natural breath quality to return without any more focus or concentration on the breath. And start to bring your attention to all the muscles in the face, releasing any holding between the eyebrows, around the temples and the jaw. Allow the throat and the tongue to feel relaxed. Let the back of the neck feel soft. And then imagine that you had a gentle weight on the front of the shoulders. Allow your shoulders to sink down into the floor. Let there be a heavy sensation from the shoulders all the way down the arms, through to the elbow, through to the wrist, and all the way to the tips of the fingers, letting the arms sink down. And start to visualize your own spine. Work your way down your spinal column, letting every muscle that attaches to the spine gently relax into the floor. Let the abdomen feel relaxed, just gently rising and falling with each soft breath. And bring your attention to your pelvis, 
Again, imagining that there was a weight on the front of the hips. Letting there be a heavy sensation that travels down through the legs to the knees, through to the ankles, and out through the tips of the toes. Letting every muscle in the legs soften and release as they sink into the floor. Just enjoy these next few minutes of quiet rest for the body and the mind. bring your attention back to the surface and lengthen your breath. And then in your own time, begin to move a little bit through the fingers and the toes, gently waking up your body. You can take any other movement or stretch that would feel good to you right now. And then eventually bend the knees and roll yourself over to one side. You just pause there briefly in a fetal pose to notice how you feel in your body right now. And with as little extra effort as possible, come back upright and take a comfortable seated posture with the eyes still closed. And once you are sitting again, Find a tall posture through the spine, feeling that energy draw upward and out through the crown of the head. And start to deepen the inhalation phase of the breath to help wake up the body again. And we'll end our practice chanting OM one time. You can bring the palms together in front of the heart and take a deep breath in. Oh. Exhale and gently bow the head, acknowledging yourself for making time.
time and space to practice this morning and expressing gratitude to your own body. Thank you all so much for joining me again. I hope you enjoyed this class.